So I'm back and um, I let all this dry and then I didn't let these dry enough. I thought they would be dry, but they weren't dry. So when I put them in with the, the gloss medium, the pencil shavings that I had sprayed, I put them in with the gloss medium, they were still a little wet. So, you know, the medium also took on that color, which is kind of a cool effect. Um, and that's kind of nifty. I did not um, try waiting until they were dry and doing it again this time. It's been a long time between since I made the video of this stuff and this segment of the video we're on now. I had a long break in between. Um, so I thought I would just put a little bit of uh, gesso over the side of some of these that were clear. And I thought we could put some ink on them or something and see how they react with just the no color and with the um, gesso. I also flowed some colors over this page. And the texture was there. I would like to actually use some darker texture. But you can kind of see what it looks like there. If I turn it around. It has some really, really interesting texture. Um, and these are fairly washed out colors. They're not really vibrant. Um, but so we're going to do some more stuff on this too and see how that works out. I think I'll spray some ink on it and just kind of let it run and give it a little water maybe. Um, and then I have this page that I thought we'd start for like an actual project. Um, and this one I put on the pencil shavings. Now these pencil shavings had been sitting in that um, gloss gel since I made them way back at the beginning of these pages. And because of that, it took all the ink tents where I'd sharpened my ink tents pencils and it activated all the ink in that. And so we got really, really colored um, stuff. So I just went over the top of it so that it would knock back the color on these. Um, it could be a really cool effect if you wanted to leave the intense inks in there. Um, but I thought that would start back, and I will talk about that when we get ready to start it. But let's get a couple sprays. Uh, let's see what I have. That's a halo. Sorry, I did not actually pull out these sprays ahead of time. Okay. Um... I have two that are Mr. Huey's and a Glimmer Mist, so we will see what we get. Let's start on the little spots here, and I'm just going to give a little tiny squirt. Ooh, that's a big squirt. And I thought I would do this. Just give it a little bit of water and just kind of let it sort of drip and drain over it and see what kind of happens here. And then... I would be out of paper towels. I'll get a shop rag here, or my studio rag. And let's just kind of let that go over and then let it drain off. And then, see what we kind of get here. Hopefully they can actually see the colors well. Different lighting, having to live with that. Okay, let's clean up that stuff off of there. And I thought we could try um, a couple of different colors. We could try some Glimmer Mist, shake it up. And this one I don't think is quite as strong. can't really see, but it's starting to run down there a little bit. I think we need a little bit more. I do not like how Glimmer Mist spray, or I do not like how Lindy Stamp Gang spray. They don't spray in a misted circle. They have like a pattern that sprays. Yes, I know, picky, but that's just me. I actually don't use sprays that often anyway, so, you know, what difference does it really make, right? Okay. We had some interesting mixing of colors between the two here. Right in here we got some blues where that green hit the purple. It made this really cool bluey purpley color. 
You can see how it kind of went on the pencil shavings too and it gave it some color, but this one really, it sinks down in and leaves the tops white. And I bet if we, oh, can't do just that, but it's sinking right down in and really showing up that texture. So let's see what a lighter color does. This is kind of a yellowy orange and I think I will do this and get some of that purple off of there. And this is just in the Mod Podge, or not Mod Podge, Collage Podge. Um, in this section here, it's Collage Podge. So, I'll shake this up a little. And that is an intense spray, which is cool. Let's give it a little bit of something to sort of move it around a little here. You could let it run down over that gesso too. Kind of see what it does. That one's running some more too. Cool. Okay. That one is with that bright yellow, and I hope that yellow comes through because when I'm looking at it through the phone, it looks kind of dingy, almost greeny yellow, but it's actually a really bright yellow orange. But you can see how the different colors over that texture. Um, give you a really neat background effect, and I think it could be really fun, especially in something even um, that's just more, what do I want to say, abstract, or, you know, something you're not really necessarily trying to make it look real, so I guess, yeah, abstract would be the right word for that, put those sprays back, so that gives you an idea, these, if you put the, if you spray them in, put a puddle of ink and mush them all around and let them dry, that has a really nifty effect and I think you could use the different ones together that would be really cool. So, let me give these a little whirl here, kind of move them around, and see how they dry. I'm going to set that, oops, I keep bumping you, I'm going to set that aside and just let it finish drying and then we'll come back to it later, if I remember, hopefully I'll remember. Excuse me. Okay, so this is the one I put that, um, just the colors on, and I think I put that in gesso. I think that's gesso with the shavings in it. Um, I love this color. Let's just kind of flow a little bit on and see what happens. This is Turquoise Green by Grumbacher Academy. I actually really like this color, and I don't mind, the paint's pretty decent, so you get a brush. Jeez, I keep bumping it. Sorry. Y'all are going to get dizzy and pass out any second, right? Okay. I put lots of water on my brush because I want to make it kind of like a ink. Ink, maybe? Nice and flowy. If I would move my stuff, I could actually get to my water dish. So I've got that pretty flowy. And I'm just going to kind of put it on spread it a little bit here. And you'll be able to see some places where other color will still show through. We'll kind of leave that scrubby like that so it kind of does. And then again, I'm just going to kind of go whoop and watch and see what it does. And that is really nifty. Let's see, blow it around a little bit. Noise. So I'll hold this up and see if it can autofocus for us. There. You can see all the colors that are behind it with that wash. You can see kind of the cool effect it made up here where it did a little cauliflower kind of thing going, a little bloom. But that made a really, really neat texture. And with a wash, you can see 
where the background colors still show through in places, which gives it a really neat effect. So try that for a background. I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to set that aside to dry too. And I'm going to pull out that one picture. Uh, this is out of my journal and it has these funky little punches because of the system I use to bind it. It's called an arc binding system. And let me find this. This one's dirty, but it is just a round disc and it's got little ledges. Can I get it to reflect the ledges for you? Yeah. You can see it's like a lip and they fit into those little things and they're individual. They're not all hooked together. They just are held together by the paper. And I'm still on the fence about it. I like it because I can take pages out of my journal. Move this out of the way. I can take a page out of my journal to work on by just simply pulling it and it just pops out. I can work on it and then I can just push the little tabs back in and it stays in, it goes back in my journal. So I can take pages out and work on them and put them back. I can add stuff into it um, and I don't have to worry about the binding. The only thing that um, I'm not overly wild about is it's not quite as easy to turn sometimes as like your wire binding. Um, and you can't stick this in with other stuff and get it mushed around or it could pull them out. It's fairly strong as long as you're careful. If you stick this in a bag and it pulls on these really hard, you have an issue. But other than that, it's pretty good and about my best solution right now. It seems like I'm always on the hunt for the perfect solution on how to have journal pages not get dirty on each other, you and you're working, you know what I mean? Um, and that you can put stuff in and out of them, stuff like that. So I'm always, it seems like I'm always trying to find the perfect thing and I haven't found it yet, but you never know. It could happen. So my thought behind the patches of um, that texture on here, these weird patches, is um, on the Oregon coast, we have these funky pine, I think they're a pine type of pine tree, and um, they grow really weird because it's so windy on our coast that it is so hard on the trees that they all the foliage goes towards one side. All the foliage goes inland um, because it's been blown so hard from the breeze coming in that it it just takes all the foliage off and they just struggle and struggle. So if if you have if this is the ocean side over here and this is land side, these are just kind of all pushed this way. And they have these long kind of spindly branches and trunks. And so we're going to go with that. It's not going to be realistic, but it's just going to be a quick um, thing. So I'm putting out some color on my palette. I have that turquoise green that we used in the background on that other. Um, I have cerulean, ultramarine, sap green. I have a little bit of burnt sienna, which I need to get a new one of because for some reason this thing has gotten really weird texture to it. And Liquitex Basics doesn't usually do that. So, oh, that was. No, this is sap green. Okay. And um, this is, let's see, sap green and primer yellow by Liquitex Basics as well. So, I have a bunch of paint out on my palette. I don't know if you guys can see what I was doing there, but here we go. I have the turquoise green, cerulean, ultramarine, hooker's green. Burnt Sienna, uh, Sap Green, and Lemon Yellow. And I'm going to kind of try to, and I'm going to put out some white. Don't use your teeth to open them. It's a very bad thing. But I don't have my pliers handy. So I have a little bit of that, and I'm just going to do, I'm going to kind of try to do the sky water area with just kind of washes rather than really thick paint. So... I still have a little bit of this color in there, but I want to use um, the cerulean with a touch of ultramarine. And I'm going to do that at the top. I did gesso this paper, so it's going to take things just a little bit differently 
than it otherwise would have. And I think I'm going to have to use a different brush because that one is making bubbles. Bubbles, bubbles. I don't want bubbles. I don't have a one inch acrylic brush anymore. It died. Oh, I guess I'll have to. Oh, yeah, here I got one. Okay. Okay. Let's go again here. And I kind of want it darker up here than I do at the bottom where the horizon is. So, this is just a, a quickie kind of thing here. I kind of had a thought in my mind, and I'm not going to get too uptight if it doesn't end up being anything spectacular because it's just an experiment. Give yourself the permission to just experiment and have fun. Oops, a little more cerulean maybe. I got people coming in and out here. Everybody's out working on their cars today. got my sign, the one that says recording. I love you, babe. Because he gets annoyed when he comes in and I'm like, I'm recording. <laughs> so he knew I was going to record today. He said, put out your sign. Okay. That just kind of gives us some background color to work on. And I am going to take, let's see if I can get my clean brush, thirsty brush, which means that I dried out my brush. I rinsed it with clean water, dried it out on my towel, and pull it across. And I'm going to have to re-wet that just a little bit. And I'm just kind of pulling up some of that color. I just kind of want a spot for my horizon. Hopefully my horizon will not be too crooked because then it looks like everyone's going to fall off the edge of the earth. Okay, I'll leave that in there. Okay, that gives us, you know, a little bit of a lighter spot there. We'll see what happens. Um, I kind of want to have some waves, and I think I'm going to kind of make... I'm going to use a little bit of this turquoise green because um, the water off our coast is a little bit greener. And I'm going to add just a touch of sap green. Our water usually looks a little bit greener than, you know, say Hawaii or someplace like that where they have whiter sand. Our sand is really brown. So we have kind of a green color to our water. And I think I just kind of want to make some wave, sort of, and then just add a little bit of green like that. And um, take a touch of that burnt sienna and put it with that same green. That's going to give me kind of more of a gray, green, kind of, and I'm just going to kind of put in some lines out there for some surf, maybe. And most often on our horizon, we have a darker line where the water meets the air. So that'll just kind of give us a horizon line, right? Okay. Now, maybe we should put some little fluffy clouds up there. So we often have some kind of misty, misty kind of clouds coming in. I do not got to spend as much time at the coast as I would really like to. I want to live there someday. Right now, it's just not just not the time, but someday I am going to live there. And I'm just
just going to take a little bit of white to highlight the tops. Just give them a little bit of oomph, you know, a little happiness to them there. A little sunshine on them. And because I am on the west coast of the U.S., our sun goes down over our beaches. So most of the day, the sun is behind you if you're looking out to the ocean, unless it gets later in the day. So we don't see the actual sunshine in the sky until way later in the day. So we just have the sun shining off our clouds. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and put in some foam on top of these little waves. And since we sort of have some little dry land out here, I'm going to make some bigger waves coming over that. And I'll have to come back and actually add a little bit more um, white. once Because there's going to be kind of a little spit of land there, I think, that's going to be kind of a blacky brown rock. Which is what we have a lot of that here. Especially in different parts, but um, we have a bunch of places where the rock is kind of, almost looks like volcanic colors, but I don't think it's volcanic. I think it's just um, just a, that color of rock. I don't know. don't know much about geology. So I'm taking, let's see, I could put this, I bet you guys can see it if I move it there, right? Yeah. You can kind of see where I'm working here. I took a bunch of burnt sienna, and I'm taking um, some ultramarine, and I'm going to mix those together. They make a gorgeous dark, dark brown. It's like a sepia, um, and nearly a black and adding a little bit of um, this to just have rocks out here and then put just a little bit of the white in there and you can add the highlights later but I really want this little spit of rocks out here and you notice I'm kind of painting the whole thing with a giant brush because it's what I had in my hand <laughs> so I'm going to put those back out in here put a little bit of rock up in there We'll have the water spewing over it, and it'll be kind of cool looking. So there's not actually any of that texture, pencil shaving texture, under where I put this, like, spit of land here. Um, now, the trick is going to be to get my brush clean off of that. But there was some gesso with, had gotten some color in there, and I had scraped the stuff back down, so I had some color there. So that's a good place for some rocks. And I'm going to go back in with just a little bit of this green here and kind of come right in here so we can see that there's there's water between our bushes and the rock out there. You can kind of see that. Just a little bit. Our bushes are going to kind of cover a lot of that, so. Okay, now I'm going to go to my hooker's green. I'm going to make a puddle over here that's a hooker's green. And I'm going to add a touch of sap green, make it a little darker. And then I'm also going to take a little scoop out of the um, dark brown I made with the, I'm actually going to mix some into here. The dark brown I made with the ultramarine um, burnt sienna, that's just a gorgeous brown. I love it. Okay, and I am going to do the trees. And I'm kind of going to do the dark colors first, and then I'm going to use a little wash of uh, some lighter colors um, kind of in it. I kind of want to just get funky edges like that. I don't want to make them perfect. But they do have these weird tuft looking type foliage like this. It's kind of interesting. I just get so much wind that it just mushes them all around and makes them all go one direction. And I don't know if you have trees like that if you live along the coast, but we do definitely have some crazy trees over here. 
there's usually quite a bit of um, quite a bit of wind. Sometimes it's nice and calm, but um, there's often quite a bit of wind. But oddly enough, I've been to the beach during the uh, winter and had some of the most nice, beautiful, calm days that were just so nice. And you look over in the valley where I live in the Willamette Valley and it's just gray and socked in with fog and yucky and feels really nice to go to the beach because you get a little attitude pick-me-up. Which is nice. Cause sometimes I need that. Sometimes I'm growly and I just need a attitude adjustment. Kind of have our trees there. Put a little bit here. I don't have that textury stuff here, but there could be a nice little branch coming over there. Some coming off of here, maybe too. Okay, that gives us our trees to start with. Those won't seem so horribly dark. Um, once we put some other colors over them. They just seem really dark right now. Okay, I'm taking more hookers green, a little bit of yellow. Because the bushes that I want to make down here are a little lighter color. We have these bushes, I think, I think they're Salal, but there's some other ones too. And they just have, they just grow right along the bluffs and along the edges of land um, before you get down to where the beaches are. And they are really pretty and they make it so green, you know, it's not bare. They make it so nice and green. You know that green. Which is why I live in the valley. Instead of some other place. Because we have a lot of green in the Willamette Valley and in the Cascades and the Coast Range, which are the mountains that are on either side of us. Um, there's so much green. It's like almost rainforest but we have firs and stuff instead of jungle trees. So there's forest and there's firs and and like vine maples and um, lots of underbrush ferns and stuff and it's just absolutely beautiful here. I can't imagine not having trees. I can't imagine. It would be terrible. I could never live in a desert. I'm glad for those of you that do live in a desert and enjoy it. I am really glad for you. That's awesome. You just won't be seeing me there. Just the thought of having to live somewhere brown is debilitating almost. <laughs> I don't like brown. I don't even really like the color brown. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of grass in here. Just to kind of give us a base. This isn't, you know, your whole beautiful finished painting thing here, but it gives us a little something for our bushes to sit by. Pull down a little bit of dark onto that. Gives a little bit of the shadows under the bushes. Without having to get nuts here. Okay. Oh, no paint on me. Oh, there we go. Um... Uh oh, I'll drop a paint in there. That's not good. I think I am going to take a little bit more of this bluey greeny that we used for the water and I am just going to darken our horizon a little bit more. It's just kind of too light. I sometimes forget how much lighter it can dry sometimes. There, I'll give us just a little bit more depth to the ocean here. Okay. Now, I am going to take a moment to dry the acrylic on the trees and stuff because I actually want to use the bumps from that texture to give us some, uh, some depth and really see that texture. And this is dry. I'll give you a little close-up here. Let's see. It's going to be 
sideways and upside down, but you can see there's still a lot of little tiny white places in there, but that's really a nice dark, dark, dark green. And that's what I want because anywhere it's in the shadows, it's so dark green like that. So here's a little bit close up. You can really see the texture in these bushes. And the grass kind of pulled down. So it doesn't look like blades of grass, but it gives you the idea that there's grass there. That's all it's needed. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm going to pull a little bit of yellow into that green mix that we had, and they don't have a lot of yellow in them, so um, pull in a little sap green, get that same blue-greeny color. We kind of want a little lighter shade of that blue-green color, uh, just a touch of yellow. Let's see what we have here. It gives us a little bit of lighter greens. You probably can't tell the difference on the camera, but I can see some of the highlights in there. So I'm just kind of trying to skim over that texture. Just, you know, let, let some of it come through just by way of what, how it grabs that paint on there. Just let that grab on there. Add a little bit towards the top where it looks a little bit, you can see the green shining, shining on the top of the bushes here. Let's see what happens if I add a little bit of white. It's going to be kind of olive-y. Okay. Now, I'm using the side of my brush. So I'm holding it like parallel to my desk surface and skimming it along. And that will only catch the bumps for the most part. And it doesn't give um, brush strokes too bad. So if you just kind of vary, just like Bob Ross would say, three hairs and some air and just kind of jump it along there like that and it just it just picks up the texture I really you get a lot of that texture picked up hopefully that will be able to show up on um, in pictures once I get done and you don't want to overdo it because then you end up losing your texture so I'm add a little bit more yellow for the foliage down below it tends to be just a wee bit, have highlights of yellow, just a little bit more. Add just some of that, and I'm going to add a little bit of white again to that. So I have a really pale color, and just kind of catch the tops. Get some of the tops of up here, so it looks like those are have sun shining on them. And go across the where we have that shaving, pencil shavings texture down here, that good stuff. There. There. Now we have bushes and trees, and I'm going to take that really super light color, and I'm just going to do, just hit the tops of some of these trees. I'm actually going to use a little bit more white in there even. Just a little bit more, and I'm just going to get just, just like the tops of the trees up here. Just the tops, a little bit more white even. Just so that you see some of those leaves where the sun's really shining. There. Okay, good enough. Alright, I am going to add in some um, trunks. Let's see if I can get a good brush from here. Okay, I'm going to take. Should I just use a palette knife here? my handy dandy palette knife and I am going to scrape up some of that ultramarine again and put it down here on my palette that's probably going to be off my palette will probably be off frame a little bit and I'm going to put some of that um, burnt sienna in there I'm actually going to need more than that and I'm just going to mix those together really good and they make a gorgeous 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 dark brown and that's what we want for these trunks these trunks are very dark brown um, and we'll add a few highlights, but these trunks on these trees are really a dark brown. And I want to make sure we get enough burnt sienna in there so that it's on the brown side and not the blue side. If it was the blue side, that would make for a good black, especially in certain color schemes. But I kind of want it on the brown side this time. Now 
watercolor also mixing ultramarine and burnt sienna makes an awesome awesome brown and because it's a mixed color um, whenever there's variations in where you paint um, the this dark color then you see a, the color shifts a little here and there rather than just using a, a brown out of a pan or a tube um, you get some a really nice mixing going on that just gives you a beautiful color and I'm just gonna put in some tree branches here and they sort of have this weird funky way that their branches work and then this one will come clear out from there and it will lean it will be leaning clear out there and that's really what the branches do they just go from the trunk over in this area and they just go way out okay and they're gnarly because there's some kind of a I think there's some kind of must be some kind of a pine just the way that they look like but they're one that's got more clumps rather than you know like a Christmas tree looking pine. Okay, and these guys, I'm going to go clear down a little ways into our bush because I want these trees to disappear into the bushes. So, okay, and these are just the trunks. We'll add some highlights to them. kind of remind me, these kind of trees that we have over here kind of remind me of those you see in some Japanese paintings where they, they're all just kind of gnarly and go all over the place. Here, coming up from in here, we have a little tiny tree. And he's barely had a chance to live. He might not make it. And then there. All right. Definitely not realistic looking, but that texture really did work for us, right? Okay. I'm going to take a touch of white and then a touch of burnt sienna and just dab into that trunk color that we have until I get a nice highlight color. I think this will kind of do it. Just kind of have some highlights. No, it's just too close still. Let's see if this will do it. There we go. Kind of highlight some of our trunks so they're getting sunshine. Follow them down and not get lost. Here, they're just some highlights. Nothing exciting or special, really. Just a few little spots where the sun could shine for us. Maybe a little down in here. I think that that will give us a kind of a nice highlight where that trunk is. It gets a little bit of that texture. Let's get this little guy. There. All right. That's actually pretty good. I'm going to go back in and add a little bit of white where I want the waves to crash over um, crash over that rock. So I'm really going to do it up right here. Make this kind of come over like that. 
because we have a lot of rocks that are right on the edge and when the tide goes out and um, is out a little ways and especially coming back in it's just so pretty because they just crash over these rocks and it makes it really pretty. Okay, yeah, just a little bit more to that wave. Okay, I was crashing over there too. Okay, that is it. That is as far as I'm going for right now. So, I will hold this up for you guys to see. And then when I'm all done, I'll take a picture. So you can see. Here's where the water... The, there you go. You can see the white, where it's crashing over the rocks right there. See some of our highlights on our tree trunk. See the bushes and stuff up close here. See, we really just use that texture to not have to paint even shapes, just to add color there. So I'll turn this sideways so you can get up close and see this. There we go. See, I've just used that texture to make my trees for me. I didn't have to put anything, I didn't have to put lights and shadows and shapes, I didn't have to draw shapes of leaves or shapes of anything, it just did that for me. So there is that, and I'll take a picture to put up at the end. I hope this gives you some ideas. Um, get out your electric pencil sharpener, save out your shavings. Um, you might be able to somehow sift them a little so that there's not so much lead in them. I had colorful lead in mine. If you have graphite lead in yours, you're probably going to get kind of a grayer um, sort of color, but I had used them mostly for um, sharpening colored pencils, so that's why I had the weird colors in there. Um, try this out. Do something creative and fun with this idea. It's just one more thing you could put into, um, into a texture. So look around. You wouldn't believe the things you could find to stick in some gesso and use as a texture. Have an adventure, and thanks for joining me on my adventure. Bye.